you're new in town or just new to this whole podcast thing, you're tuning in to Law by Night, the podcast that discusses all things vampiric with no fear of breaching the masquerade. In this episode, we shall discuss ghost hunting in the world of darkness. We will learn how to best portray them as a player or as a storyteller by dissecting their origins, lore and motives. There you are! Quick, 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 quick! There's no time to explain. Pick up that laptop, briefcase, microphone case, the RPG-7, and get on the bus! Quickly now, quickly! And shut the bloody door! Were you born in a barn? <clears throat> I apologise for all the sudden commotion and for calling you in earlier than usual, but we have managed to locate that risen Christian. It is, unfortunately, quite the commute to reach there, and we are not the only ones looking for him. Friendship in Surrey is our location, some manor house in the woodlands, or at least what is left of it. Most of the team are a little nervous, as we are all aware of an incident occurred with some associates of ours and their new recruits around about the Christmas period, but I can tell you about that later. There are more pressing matters at hand. It occurred to me shortly after our phone call that we have not had the chance to probably sit down and talk about what exactly we do, ghost hunting in general, and the many forms it takes, from thrill seekers, the law hunters, or those that are just power hungry. Different organizations pull from a variety of sources in attempt to deal with the beings that exist in the underworld. But before we do that, I want you to really start at the beginning and take a look at ghost hunting in general. I know you came to the Phoenix Institute with some understanding of the true nature of the ghosts and their existence, but in order to truly appreciate what we do in terms of modern ghost hunting, we do have to appreciate where we came from. To be incredibly short, we mortals have always poked the cage of the supernatural beast that hides in the shadows. We are a curious race that demands answers to life's many questions. For individuals like us, it is trying to learn what lies beyond the veil, the other side of our world, the Skinlands. The ultimate aim of the Phoenix Institute is to find a means of entering the labyrinth to truly learn the nature of spectres first hand. Our goals of detecting, observing, and documentation of ghosts using an array of technology makes our company ghost hunters through and through. Others just focus on violence, relying on their lesser, primitive desires to kill or exercise before understanding, whether that be through technology, exorcism, or strange rare powers that those in the know refer to as Numina, whether the ghost in question wishes to leave its haunt or fetter alone or not. These are ghost busters. I know what you're thinking. We are heading to peaceful friendship with machine guns and rocket launchers, but you know the Phoenix Institute do not want to leave things to chance. There is simply no point discussing with an angry risen. But believe it or not, there are groups more assertive than us, such as the Sons of Tertullian, who really put the Hunter in Ghost Hunter. They are religious fanatics who view all ghosts as spawns of Satan who must be destroyed. Realistically, they don't know the difference between Wraith and Spectre, but they are just ghosts and ghosts must go. Brutal in their efficiency and muscular in their adherence to hard like Christianity, the all-male order will seek out those they suspect of being possessed and torment the ghost, if there even is one, right out of the target. If the victim dies, eh, at least they die nobly. The alternate energy group, on the other hand, could be viewed more as a morally better organization and perhaps our closest rival, but such comparisons are not appreciated in my company. <clears throat> The AEG were formed in order to solve the world's energy crisis. Most relevant to this conversation is the paranormal research wing branch that exists within the AEG who, for many years, worked with what were called ectoplasmic converter engine devices that boiled waves down to raw pathos and which the human scientists, led by one Ruby Mayfer, were unable to utilize. The last I checked, the PRW are now focusing on some weird engines that are supposed to set up permanent viewing windows into the underworld. The Virgilian Foundation for Phanatonic Research doesn't just view into the underworld, but converse with the spirits within, specifically famous thinkers, artists, composers, and writers. They then make those race an offer to publish new works in the skin lads. To our immediate knowledge, the hierarchy or other human authorities know not of this. How do we know? Well, that is none of your business. <laughs> now, swiftly moving on, some, however, make a pretty fine business in the extermination of ghosts for its wealthy clients as well as us. Daryl and Squib practice the art of lobbing mortals into the Shadowlands to see what happens, in addition to hiring expendable hunters to be rid of said spirits. No doubt Dr. Lionel Squib has sinister intentions for their souls. Anyway, there are 
countless groups that I could list for you like the Center of Parapsychological Research, the College of Psychic Learning, and even the FBI in the US of A, but there is just far too many to list here so by all means go through our records and read them in your own time explorer. As for us, the Phoenix Institute, we fit into the knowledge seekers camp for lack of a better phrase. We as a whole practice spiritualism. Most ghost hunters do, even if they do not wish to acknowledge they are religious. Spiritualism or spiritism as it is known here in the UK is based on the belief that spirits have both the ability and the inclination to communicate with the living. The afterlife, the spirit world as the normies call it, is seen as not as a static place but as one in which spirits continue to evolve. There are others who view ghost hunting through the microscope, taking a scientific approach to spirit based activities. This is a really basic definition of pseudoscience. Now, you and I know that everything I have just said is true, most do not, which is the only difference. Where we align is that our general acceptance ghosts are real is simply a way of life. Modern spiritualism, however, saw its founding in about the mid 1800s, mostly in Europe and the US. The Fox sisters, Gate and Margaret, are said to be its founders, claiming they could speak to ghosts, quickly rising to fame. Many said the sisters were charlatans and frauds, knocking furniture and clicking their heels and so forth. Sure, mediums and soothsayers as an occupation existed long before this, but the little stunt of the Fox sisters caused mediums to pop up left, right, and center, like flies to elephant dung, turning into an art form. It wasn't uncommon for a seance to be the main event at a middle class gathering party, particularly amongst women. Coincidentally, Incidentally, many of whom were part of various reform movements such as women's suffrage and dissolution of slavery. There were also magician acts such as the Davenport brothers who had ghosts play instruments for them. They too had folks attempt to debunk their acts. Harry Houdini, for example, was infamous for exposing many famous mediums and other performers as frauds. The acts obviously didn't hold such liberating mindsets. As many a spiritualist church exists, as does many fake mediums, as well as the recentish invention that that is the Televangelists, both providing interesting sources for Paphos for the clever wraith. But I promise you not all mediums are fake. Derry, the giant driving the bus, has seen many a wraith since he started working with us and far more beforehand. Like many we have encountered, he is a mysteriously brooding individual who generally shuns the company of others. It's understandable. Mediums, true mediums at least, know they are different and are simply laughed at if they start talking about being able to see their great aunt Gertrude at the dinner table when they've been dead for 20 years. It is something that can make the child medium, for which many start developing their gifts, difficult to comprehend. Others develop their gifts later in life, when society has put their boring standards on their minds and are far more surprised seeing their grandma at the foot of their bed. On the flip side, such unique encounters can prove to be quite cathartic, knowing that said loved one is relatively okay on the other side. Some are fortunate enough to have family members or some other mentor guide them through the process. Terry here thought he was going mad, then he found us through a pub crawl and, well, the rest they say is history. There are some who are quite content with the voices in their head than they do the company of their fellow person. It is not uncommon for such mediums to use their gifts, to have them meet other mortals for some sense of gratitude, be it through the mortal they helped or the rave they supported to reach transcendence through their natural innate gifts or the aid of props like Ouija boards and tarot cards. Of course, there are some who do this for their own gains or to trick wraiths to revealing important passions and fetters. Worse still, to turn wraiths on the mortals. A Terry here could have easily snapped to convince a not so pleasant wraith to cause mischief or <laughs> lack of a better phrase. Then there are some wraiths that know of such tricksy mediums, punishing them in return. They are called thrashers, some more kind than others. All of this, of course, is assuming the medium is able to shut out said voices and properly engage in conversation. Then there is the fact that some ghosts will just flat out try to possess the medium, wittingly or otherwise, and that is assuming that said medium's gifts are innate. Some gain such talents after near-death experiences. My point is, is that each experience and handling of ghosts is unique to the specific individual, including how many chills run down their spine when they have said restless encounters and whether they actually see, hear, or feel them in their mind. Obviously, mediums that fly solo are important contacts for ghost hunters, but it is often a tool overlooked as even the most advanced and genuine medium may struggle to communicate with ghosts outside of a particular group, like a certain lineage for example. Some
Some are more niche, only able to speak to a particular wraith via an energy based agreement called the contract which involves the wraith making themselves known to the medium to be first. Mediums who tell you what you want to hear all the time are an immediate red flag and something to make note of. Be mindful of the pricing too. Sure, most mediums will demand an armored leg to work with but the true medium knows the dangers of annoying wraiths so something more tangible in addition to money must be taken into consideration also. In our line of work, we encounter mediums in one of three capacities. The low medium, part of a cult, or a larger organization for which there are plenty to be found in the latter two. If you have been digging around in our files or have been speaking to our other members, chances are that you may have heard of the Banner Dante and the Orphic Circle, one of which is more supernatural than the other. The Banner Dante are the more recognizable out of the two and perhaps the more approachable when it comes to researching them, or at least the Agarian visionary tradition in the Favilli district of northeastern Italy during the 16th and 17th century. In actual history, there are claims that they travelled out of their bodies whilst asleep to struggle against malevolent witches in order to ensure good crops for the seasons to come. During the hundred or so years they were active, many were accused of being actual witches and were punished accordingly by the Roman Inquisition. The Benedenti that we, the Phoenix Institute, occasionally run into are both similar and different, potentially. We currently lack the sources to make a proper claim on that for you. We could have an entire night dedicated on them if you please, but what I will share with you for now is that the Benedanti are a secret society of mortals who developed sorceress means of crossing over into the underworld. Each Benedant, upon initiation into the group, forges a unique fennel sword that allows them to reach across the shroud. The Benedanti are known to and fear by many wraiths and are said to be properly located in Labandi, Italy. Membership in the Benedanti is open only to those who were born with a cow over their face, a rare but natural phenomenon occurring roughly in 1 to 80,000 childbirths, which is removed by a Benedant who then becomes the infant's mentor. At the student's 20th birthday, they become a full member of the society. Each Benedant keeps their cow with them at all times. When placed over their eyes, it allows them to see into the Shadowlands and perceive ghosts. I wasn't going to mention the Orphic Circle to you, but when I mentioned to you about the presence of vampires during a recent conversation, you didn't seem all that phased, which I did find initially suspicious, but I shall assume for now you have had that conversation with one of the other team members here. Yes, vampires, mages, werewolves and much more are very much present in our world and the Orphic Circle is a group made up of such unpleasantries. Again, this larger agent organization could have a night in all of itself but to be brief, their 300-ish members are a collection of varied scholars, visionaries, rogue members of the Giovanni Vampire Clan and Yonafantos Death Mages. Their headquarters is located in the Fiasoli region of Greece somewhere near Kalabaka, we're told. They are so named after Orpheus, the only mortal man known to journey into the underworld and return again into the realm of the living, supposedly carrying the sacred tomes that outlined the great mysteries themselves. Some members of the circle even claim that Orpheus journeyed into the underworld specifically to find that knowledge. The circle are our closest rivals simply because they know more than us and they are not sharing. That said, we have information on them that could get them turned to ash in seconds and that is just acknowledging the presence of these Giovanni vampires across the world and the various dark kingdoms. It is an interesting standstill between us both to say the least. Do you know what I find most fascinating with our line of work? That you and so many others are more accepting of the existence of ghosts than say werewolves or vampires. Now isn't that just curious? The world is far less religious than it once was and true science dominates everywhere and yet ghost hunting as a form of entertainment and occupation is in more in demand than ever before. Anyone from any background can partake in the mostly harmless activities of ghost hunting. A decent mobile phone with a torch and cameras, a laptop or tablet is all that you really need. As much as it excites me where the future holds us, our line of work being truly accessible to all is not wholly good either. Sure, you have plenty of numpties with top of the range laser grid lights, EVP recorders, thermal cameras, EMF meters and so forth but that is not the point. Ghost hunting is not all fun and games, in fact it is mostly a very serious business. You know far more than most that the horrors that lie in the underworld are far more frightening than any piece of media you could conjure up 
up, and I worry deeply for a, a potential quartet of teenagers who accidentally anger a shade for the sake of some YouTube views. Highly unlikely for sure, but never dismiss something because it's just unlikely, because that will lead you to an early grave. To be kept updated, follow the Law By Night VTM Twitter and Instagram pages to find out when we'll upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell, as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. Until next time, farewell.